Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Sports' greatest trilogy seems familiar to these two. Ollie was bold and brash. Fast and fun, just the way Dabo likes it. A player's coach with a certain flair. Frazier was the establishment. Old school, purposeful power, a timeless left hook. Like running the ball in Saban-esque defense. Smoke and Joe won the first go round with a late power punch. Kind of like how Mighty Bama won their first taming of the Tigers. Ali came back with fabulous flurries in the second meeting. Muhammad Ali! Much the way Clemson picked up the pace for last year's crown. New kings of college football! But for Ali and Frazier, the rubber match, their very best was saved for last. And tonight, with this sugar sweet reward, we get the sense of the same. What shows they have delivered for us in the last two years. Alabama won the first round 45 to 40 and then Clemson last year 35 to 31. And there is mighty Alabama 16 time national champions. The fourth year of the college football playoff and we haven't had one without them. There's just something about the presence of this ultimate power program that can't be denied. The tie has arrived. And now number one gets set. The Clemson Tigers who proved themselves with six wins over top 25 teams this year. Their third straight college football playoff appearance last year's national champs looking for a repeat performance. They've been all smiles this week in New Orleans, but as Coach Sweeney has often said, now the time is near, they're all in, as this has been the Nissan pregame rush. The stats tell us so. You look at those freak athletes out there, and you see all the size and strength and power, and you see it screams it, two of the best defenses in the country. Tom. And they're built the same way, and that means it starts up front with the defensive lines. Alabama, for all their great teams, it's always started with a defensive line. They recruit powerful guys and they reload at that position and the way they play up front they want to control the line of scrimmage they're great technicians and they use their hands extremely well to tie up blocks and free up tacklers at the second level they're powerful guys that are hard to move off the line of scrimmage if you want to try to run the football against Alabama good luck and the bell cow of that defensive front is Deron Payne He's the next great one and the next high NFL draft pick on that defensive front. He holds down the middle there. They lead the way nationally when it comes to those statistical superlatives. Best scoring defense in the country, only giving up 11 and a half points per game. As for Clemson, they have what many feel is the best unit group in the country, and that's the front four. Yeah, and they're a little bit different. Where Alabama likes to control the line of scrimmage, Clemson wants to change the line of scrimmage. They are very explosive, all four of them off the ball. Cleveland Farrell, outstanding season, leads the team in sacks and tackles for loss. On the inside, Christian Wilkins, he is very disruptive, very instinctive. The biggest and most powerful is the youngster, Dexter Lawrence. He's battled a foot injury, but when he's healthy, a very disruptive force. And then Austin Bryant, a pure pass rusher on the outside. This is a defensive front that gets off the ball quick, and their lateral quickness is outstanding. They are a big-time group. They lead the nation sacks. Pac-12 referee Lan Clark is in charge tonight, and it is time for the coin toss. Gentlemen, congratulations.
congratulations on your selection to the college football playoff semifinal, All-State Sugar Bowl. Helping me with the coin toss is Matt Winters. He is the president of the All-Star Corporation and CEO of All-State Insurance Company. We're going to flip this coin, heads and tails. Captain, what is your call? Pardon me, Captain, what is your call? Tails. Tails, the call is tails. And it is tails, you won the toss. <laughs> Alabama has won the toss and elected to defer. You're going to receive. Which way would you like to kick? I'd kick that way. Just as you are? Yep. Clemson's choice this half, they will receive. Good luck, gentlemen. Our sideline reporters tonight have spent endless hours with both teams this season. Holly Rowe and Laura Rutledge are with us. Let's start with Laura for tonight's AT&T Field Pass. Thank you, Joe. Coach, you've been a part of all four college football playoffs. Based on that experience, what do you expect from this team tonight? Well, I, I think you got to keep all this stuff simple. You know, you, you, you got to be who you are, do what you do, be relentless in how you do it, whether it's how physical you play, how much toughness you play with, how much discipline you have to execute and do your job, and how you can do it for 60 minutes. So I'm just trying to keep it simple for our guys so that we can do that. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Now over to Holly Rowe with Dabo Sweeney. Well, Coach, your players told me that all season and leading up to this game, you haven't been talking about being the defending national champs. You are the attacking national champs. How will we see that mindset tonight? That's the mindset. You know, it's in every area. It's, it's everything you do, whether you're blocking, tackling, going up for a ball, running the ball. It's in everything. It's a different mindset. That's, that's been our approach all year. We're just going to continue to be who we are. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Dabo had his team in the same hotel here in New Orleans, practiced on the same field that his college coach, Gene Stallings, put him on 25 years ago. It'll be interesting to see if Dabo wants to stick with who they have been this year, which is more of a running team than a passing team. Last year in this game, Deshaun Watson threw it 56 times. Kelly Bryant has been more of a force running the football. Will they run the football more successfully against this Alabama defense tonight? So Alabama defers after winning the coin toss. Clemson will receive. Davian Feaster, and you see in the background there, Travis Etienne back to return for the Tigers. J.K. Scott will get us started. The six foot six senior from Denver, Colorado. ETN from the goal line and he was met with a thunderous pop just beyond the 15 by Trayvon Diggs. So there's the man who follows the man, Kelly Bryant. Todd, tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, caught up with him, wanted to find out some of his favorite things coming into the ball game. His favorite meal is one that we all love country fried steak mashed potatoes and gravy favorite music little dirk and little boosie who is a louisiana native and his pregame ritual he likes to watch highlights of cam newton on the bus ride to the stadium tries to emulate a little bit of cam in his game and he's got that physicality and that size a year removed from the great deshaun watson here is bryant as Feaster is gobbled up. Chick-fil-A impact players. We mentioned Travis Etienne on the return. He grew up about an hour away from here, and he's grown up quickly in this offense as well. Mr. Clutch is Hunter Renfro. Guy in the middle is Deron Payne. He's the big man, and the safety Minka Fitzpatrick has taken home so many honors. A little odd having Renfro as the outside receiver. Here is Ray Ray McLeod coming out of the backfield, and he goes ahead for a gain of just two as Thompson made the tackle. Yeah, nice play by Deontay Thompson, who is starting in the place of the injured Hootie Jones. So this is his first start at the safety position, and a nice way to get him involved in the game early with a nice open field tackle. Third down and seven. You always have to be concerned with Kelly Bryant scrambling on third down. You have to rush him with discipline. 
into traffic and incomplete as he was looking for Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro is the go-to guy on third down. Alabama knows it, and Rashawn Evans had double coverage. Watch Evans turn and run from the inside, and then the cornerback, Averett, is there to squeeze it. They knew where the ball was going to go, and they were ready on that first third down play. Diggs, who made the big hit on special teams, now could give Bama some good field position here. Will Spires on to punt. And it's a clunker. Joe and with a fair catch just beyond midfield. With the kind of defenses in this game, field position is going to be huge. Now there is Jalen Hurts already his 27th start over the last two years. What about his favorites, Mr. Blackwood? Well, a little bit different, particularly when you talk about the meal. He likes crawfish, which is a big deal down here in Louisiana. Fried chicken and pig's feet. <laughs> his favorite music, Meek Mill and James Brown. He actually mentioned the song, The Big Payback. And his pregame ritual likes to Snapchat pictures of his suit that he wears on game day to some of his boys. Now let's see if he is styling against this extremely talented front of Clemson. Damian Harris with a run just beyond midfield as he gets things started. Chick-fil-A impact players, you should watch out for the yeah. aforementioned Damian Harris. Junior is from Richmond, Kentucky, has 11 rushing touchdowns this year. Calvin Ridley, arguably the best offensive player in the game. Clemson has a loaded front seven with Cleveland Farrell off the edge and the tackling machine, Dorian O'Daniel. First down efficiency is going to be huge for Alabama tonight. A perfect start for them after the short punt. Harris again. He is met that time by J.D. Davis. In Alabama's last game in the Iron Bowl when they lost to Auburn, Damian Harris only carried it six times. So he is one third of the way there on the first two plays of this ball game. First year offensive coordinator Brian Dable came over from the Super Bowl winning New England Patriots. Third down in this kind of distance look for a quarterback run by Jalen Hurts here. See Kendall Joseph changing the defensive front. They like to try to check Brent Venables when the offense checks. It's a pass incomplete off the hands of Cam Sims. Now that ball's a little bit low, but a catchable pass. It's out of the hands quickly to avoid that quick pass rush. And that's a ball that Alabama needs to come up with. Your quarterback's under duress. He throws it down where you can catch it away from the defender. And Cam Sims not able to come up with the catch. J.K. Scott, All-American level punter. On to try to pin Clemson as Hunter Renfro will cement those heels on the 10. Skies this a mile high, but didn't get the distance he was looking for as it'll be down just inside the 20. So both teams three and out on their first drives here at the All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. The All-State Sugar Bowl. Brought to you by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. The all-new 2018 Lincoln Navigator and Chick-fil-A. Party season is Chick-fil-A catering season. Order now. There's Nick Saban, five national championships through the years. Six would make history with the Bear. Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, some of the Alabama greats of the recent pass coming out here for this college football playoff at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Clemson second straight start from their own 16-yard line. So 
Just about three yards that time for ETN. Alabama's defense has been dealing with injuries all year. These are all the tied defenders who have missed games this season. Now, Lewis and Miller, you see them, they're back now. But were big losses from week one onward. Three out tonight. When you added up 36 of the 43 starts missed on defense were from the linebackers, Todd. Yeah, and that, that just really hurt them down the stretch, particularly. Kelly Bryant just trying to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Right now, we talked about that defensive front for Alabama that they want to try to control the line of scrimmage. They are doing that so far in the early going of this game. Second, third down play for Clemson, and both of them have been longer yardage situations. Plays right into Alabama's defense's hands. Jeremy Pruitt, defensive coordinator, on his way after the playoffs to be the head coach at Tennessee. Here's third down and seven. Bryant, that was deflected at the line of scrimmage as he was trying to get Hunter Renfro on the crossing route underneath. Nice pressure, not going to be able to get to it. Renfro's going to come crossing the middle of the field. He's guarded by Tony Brown. And there's the, coming on the little stunt to the inside. That's Terrell Lewis, who you mentioned, one of those linebackers who was injured in the first game of the year against Florida State, in there on that third down play and able to get the deflection. Spires didn't get a good punt off the first go round as Diggs waits back at the 42. They came after it. Yeah, they did. And once again, the fair catch near midfield. Just a 34-yard punt. Bama back on offense when we come back to New Orleans. Eighteenth all-time meeting between Bama and Clemson, but it is these last three has gotten the attention of the country. Scoreless here in the first quarter. Field position, you would think, Todd, that Bama has to take advantage and come away with something when Clemson's had it twice at the 16. Yeah. Bama's starting near midfield again. Well, you, you do, because in a game like this, with two defenses of this caliber, field position is huge, and now your defense and your special teams have given it to you. You went three and out the last possession. I think it's critical that you get yourself in scoring position on this possession if you're Alabama. Jacobs motioning back in as it's a nice fake by Jalen Hurts and a chunk play for the tie. Well, a little different look, a little bit of option. Watch these two guys are going to get frozen on the option. A good fake by Jalen Hurts. He's reading that end. Austin Bryant chased the play in and a 19 yard gain for Jalen Hurts on a little different look by the quarterback run game. And now the pitch and it is well read by Dorian O'Daniel a loss of two. Now Dorian O'Daniel is a fifth year senior who has just played lights out this year. All American leading the team in tackling he's fast and he's physical he came in towards the quarterback and was still able to change directions and change gears and get out there and stop Damian Harris for a tackle for loss. Pressure off the edge they pick it up over the middle that is complete to Henry Ruggs dynamic looking true freshman he goes for 10 yards starts with protection nice job up front Damian Harris also involved in the protection second down and long you get most of that yardage back and you give yourselves again another very manageable third down situation I'm not so sure this isn't two down territory if you're Nick Saban right here. Epinostis, your place kicker. Not a very good long field goal kicker. I think it's two downs here for Alabama's offense. Third and two, Harris straight up the middle, spins his way inside the 20. 11-yard run and a tied first down. Well, it's an unbalanced line. They've got an extra lineman on the right side. These are three offensive linemen. They brought an extra offensive lineman, another new wrinkle. And a big hole for Damian Harris. In this possession, we've seen a couple different wrinkles by Brian Dable and Alabama in great scoring position right now. 
First down run this time. Goes to the 10 yard line. This is the way I think you have to see Alabama run to their right. We talked about this defensive front for Clemson. The guy I think you can run at is their left end, Austin Bryant. I think that's where they are a little bit weaker in their run defense. And that time, with a right tackle on the tight end, Hale Hentges, who's an excellent blocker, they ran right at him. And Georgia, just moments ago, won the Rose Bowl in double overtime. So they will head home to play for the national championship in Atlanta. And we will find out who they will face right here. Second and five. Josh Jacobs, and he's met, and then goes forward for a couple. Bo Scarborough, excuse me, on the carry there. Bo Scarborough got dinged in practice the other day when we were here. They took him in the locker room. He did not return. Good to see him out there looking 100%. Third straight time now for Alabama. They have had third and two or less, and that is exactly what they want. Very difficult to defend an offense with a quarterback who can run on third and two. Big bow. Flag is down as he is met in the backfield. It was Davis and O'Daniel. Offside. Defense number seven. For Alabama. Bo Scarborough tried to bounce that outside. Very difficult to do against the speed of this defense, but Austin Bryant Correction. on the side that away. Results in the first down. On the side away from the play was lined up offsides, and that gives Alabama a first and goal situation. Here he is right here. Head is over the ball, over the neutral zone. The ball's being snapped right there, and that was an easy call. We talked about how important it would be for Alabama to get points on this drive. Right now, they're first and goal. He pulls it. Hurts. Flag is down again as he throws it away. Illegal formation. Offense. Too many players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. We play first down. So somebody wasn't up on the line. They had a little different motion on that play. Had a couple guys. The tight end was offset, and they had a man in motion as well. And a mental error for Alabama on that play. You got to figure Calvin Ridley has got to be involved here soon. Once again, penetrating into the backfield as Scarborough was met. That front group is getting after him. Kendall Joseph surging in. J.D. Davis, and it's a loss of six. Well, Kendall Joseph is the guy who made the play. He timed his blitz perfectly, and he forced Scarborough to try to bounce that thing to the outside. And Cleveland Farrell, we talked about this defensive front. Their lateral quickness is something that really separates them. Very difficult to bounce plays outside against this defense. Second and goals, they're backed up. Hurts extends. Now tucks inside the 10 and is forced out and chased down. Avon Wallace getting pursuit of Jalen Hurts. What a thriller there in Pasadena as we welcome you here to the college football playoff. Jalen Hurts second drive of the game. With time now extends to the end zone and incomplete. What a terrific stop by the Clemson defense. They gave up a few plays. They gave up 
Alabama was first and goal. They had the penalty, and ever since the penalty, Clemson's defense really suffocated them, and they're forcing the field goal attempt. Andy Papanastas, who has made every field goal attempt under 40 yards. I thought year. Damian Harris ran the ball really well early, and Bo Scarborough in that possession did not do a good job running the ball. He tried to bounce outside and lost yardage instead of running straight up ahead at this defense. And Bama will strike first in what has become one of the great trilogies in this modern era of sports. Thrilled that you're with us here for this main event nightcap after what was an unbelievable game yeah. out there in Pasadena. Let's get people up to speed here. A couple three and outs, and yeah. then Bama takes advantage of field position. Well, you know, mirror image programs of each other yeah. this year when you look at them in so many ways, especially with the quarterbacks wearing that number yeah. two jersey. Yeah, they both wear the same jersey. Their skill sets are almost identical. They both have arm talent, can make any throw you want a quarterback to make, but I think they're most effective for their respective offenses running the football. And we see both of them with design quarterback runs and then even more dangerous when they improvise and extend plays and get outside the pocket and can beat you with their legs. But very good defenses on both sides of the football field. And so that field position is going to continue to be huge. Alabama had two great possessions in terms of where they started. They capitalized on the second one, and that's why they have the lead. And that Alabama defense is a lot healthier now yes. than when last we saw them in the game against Auburn. Yeah, they limped down the stretch the last couple weeks. They've got some guys healthy. I even think not playing in the SEC championship game helped them in terms of getting guys back to full speed. Here's Travis Etienne, speedy freshman as he's out across the 20 yard line. So Clemson had to replace 77% of their offense from last year. Of course, Deshaun Watson, 50 total touchdowns last year. Kelly Bryant, 24 this year. Wayne Gallman carried the load for last year's championship team. Running back by committee this year with Travis Etienne. You just saw him on the return, 400 fewer yards. And that receiver, Mike Williams, had 98 catches, 11 touchdowns. Hunter Renfro this year, 55 catches and three touchdowns. And their personality offensively is different than when that guy was running the show, Deshaun Watson. They were a much more pass-heavy team the last two years than they are this year. Much more dependent on the running game with Kelly Bryant at quarterback. As Bryant is taken down. That was Anthony Jennings coming in with a tackle for loss. Well, Anthony Jennings does a nice job right here of getting right down the line of scrimmage. He takes a good angle, he sees the quarterback keep, and wraps him up behind the line of scrimmage. Alabama's defense is locked in to the Clemson running game so far in the ballgame. Second and 13. Inside screen for Ray Ray McLeod, who is met by big Ray Quan Davis. Now, again, this Alabama defense down the down the stretch, they looked a little bit worn down. These big fellows up front don't look worn down tonight. Raquan Davis coming from his inside tackle position, making an outstanding play in another third and long for Clemson's offense. Team that wants to stay on schedule and not put Kelly Bryant in spots like this. Third and 16. Two-man rush. Complete. Oh, should have been caught for a first down by Deion Kane, and somehow he couldn't corral it. He started looking upfield, Joe. The, the ball was thrown on time and accurately. There was a little wobble, but watch Deion Kane's head turn. Before he secured the catch, his eyes were turning upfield. He didn't do first things first, which was secure the football, because he would have easily had a first down had he done things the right way. And now Spires on to punt again. Third straight, three and out. And another field position opportunity for Alabama. Clemson hasn't been able to dig out of the hole. And this time it's a low line drive. As Diggs will have a returnable punt, and he's got a lane. As Alabama 
will be starting on the plus side. The tie back to offense again. Up a field goal early on here in the Big Easy. Jalen Hurd says the motivation to get back to this point and face off against Clemson again has burned deep inside him ever since they lost to the same Tigers team last year. He's had two screensavers for his phone in the 2017 year. One was Clemson hoisting the national championship trophy. The other one looked like this. This is his actual phone, and it's him walking off the field after the loss last year. He said he never wanted to forget, Joe, what he felt like in that moment. Motivation, Laura, by screensaver. Calvin Ridley is their best player, going to get him involved in this possession. As Hertz is met at the line of scrimmage by Joseph, he had nine tackles last year against Alabama that Kendall Joseph. Those negative yardage plays on first down are huge for a defense like this. Staying on schedule for both of these offenses is so important. And what that means is you want to gain at least four yards on a first down play. When you come up in game zero and go second and ten, that switches the momentum and the advantage to the defense. Here's Harris. And a good run. That'll get them back on schedule for a third and short. See, I think you need to run inside against Clemson. I think they're hard to run outside on because of their speed, and Damian Harris runs a little bit better in between the tackles. They go with tempo, and they move the chains with Harris. Tempo is something that gave Clemson problems this year, particularly in their loss to Syracuse. They look over to the sidelines a lot. They want to get the right call. Brent Venable sometimes waits, and that's why quick counts can hurt them. Harris getting steady work, but met that time as that was a great job on the inside that time. Again, it was Kendall Joseph getting involved. J.D. Davis is starting an inside linebacker. We thought Trey Lamar might be healthy enough to start. He had a stinger injury, missed a couple games down the stretch, did not play in the ACC championship game. J.D. Davis getting the start. I think Lamar will play, but he's not starting the ball game. He's a little bigger, more physical inside linebacker for this Tiger defense. Fifth start of the year for Davis at Packer. As Scarborough motions out. Empty look here for Hertz. As settling in and getting it is Irv Smith. Let's go down to the field to Holly Rowe. Well, Todd, I actually asked Brent Venables that question before the game, why Trey Lamar wouldn't start when he returned. He started eight games this season, 52 tackles, and has been one of their mainstays. But J.D. Davis has started their last four games. Is playing really good football, and with 48 tackles, they just felt he deserved to start. Trey Lamar is completely healthy. That arm injury or stinger injury is not an issue. We should see him tonight. Yeah, I think we'll see him, especially if Alabama continues to run with some success inside. Third and four. As Hertz repositions Big Scarborough. Play clock down to two. Dorian O'Daniel trying to come off the edge. They pick him up. Hertz with plenty of time. Big Bo dances ahead inside the 20 and inside the 15 for a tie. First down. Well, this is excellent protection. You got five guys blocking on four, and here comes Tempo from Alabama. Scarborough was the outlet receiver, and Hurts found him. Scarborough out of that slant formation, trying to get ahead for a yard. Davis again with a tackle. There's Damian Harris. He's averaging 8.2 yards per carry. This is the best running football team in the SEC. 265 yards a game rushing. Last year in this ball game, they ran for 221 against the Tiger defense. Play clock under five. Hurts, calm, collected, looking things over. Farrell to the end zone. Touchdown! closing Hertz wasn't bothered and Ridley scores it just tremendous composure by Jalen Hertz watch him as he scrambles typically he is going to tuck this ball and run 
He starts that way, and at the last minute, he sees Ridley uncover, and he reloads and throws the football. I think that surprised the Clemson defense because typically Jalen Hurts, when he sees grass in front of him, he's going to tuck that thing and run. Tremendous composure by Jalen Hurts. And you know, in two college football playoff championship games against Clemson, the great Calvin Ridley only totaled 50 yards in those yeah. two games. So he breaks through our first touchdown of the night. Hurts to Ridley, tied up early. at the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Joe Todd, Laura, and Holly here in New Orleans. Jalen Hurts just had the touchdown pass moments ago. As J.K. Scott kicks away again, and ETN pinned in the corner at the one. Spins away from the first wave of coverage and tried to make the most of it. Todd, let's look at all states, all hands in play. Well, we talked about Calvin Ridley needing to get involved. Here he is in the slot, and he's going to run a route, and he is going to be open right here. And Jalen Hurts is going to miss him initially. Right now, Calvin Ridley is open. But what he does is he stays with it when his quarterback leaves the pocket and uncovers in the back of the end zone. And Jalen Hurts alertly finds him and gets the connection for the touchdown. 60th career touchdown responsible for already in a two-year career. Jalen Hurts. Now just the final ticks of the clock here in this first quarter that's been dominated by Bama. Well, Clemson nine plays, zero yards. Pumps and is sacked. Raekwon Davis, all 6 7, 306, coming down on Kelly Bryant. And he just ran right through the right guard. The Maverick Morris was in at right guard, and Raekwon ran right through it. 10 to nothing, Alabama, in a dominating first quarter. Incredible stamp that Raekwon Davis just put at the end of that first quarter. Yeah, and you know, I was at practice the other day, and, and I just happened to be on the sideline, and there was a little thing going on where Minka Fitzpatrick, the leader of the defense, was getting on Raekwon Davis. Raekwon was, was talking some smack, and he said, why don't you stop talking and just make plays? You talk more than anybody on our team, just make plays. Well, he made a play there to end the first quarter, and Alabama's defense has been suffocating so far early in this ballgame. Start of the second quarter. Clemson trying to get out of this hole. Billy Bryant straight ahead, lowering his shoulders. And Davis with the tackle after a four-yard gain from See, Bryant. See, here's the dilemma for Clemson right now, Joe. If this was last year and that guy was still playing quarterback, Clemson would say, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, we have to wait to try to run the football. We need to put it in the hands of our quarterback and start pitching it all over the place. But that's not how they've played offense this year. They have relied on four returning starters on the offensive line and running the football and not putting it all on the hands of their first-year quarterback. Third and 13, pressured again. Bryant is going to tuck, try to get to the edge, and he does so for a first down. Just made the most of it, did Kelly Bryant. Well, credit the freshman back, Travis Etienne, with the block. He's out as a wide receiver. Watch number nine come back in the screen and get a block on the safety, Ronnie Harris, right there. And that enabled Kelly Bryant to get the first down. Nice job by the freshman running back, who was out as a wide receiver, getting the key block. Well, 14 minutes ticking down before half. That was their first first down of the game as Choice went ahead for two. It was another third down and long. Alabama had him right where they wanted to, to have Kelly Bryant, but he made the kind of plays he's been making all year, running the football. 19-yard run on that third and 13. Got to find a way to get Hunter Renfro involved again. Here he is in the slot. 
He's a playmaker. He's been a real dagger in the side of this Alabama defense. Second and eight. The slant was thrown behind Hunter Renfro. It'll be third and long again. Holly. Guys, a big development right now. The freshman sensation running back Travis Etienne took a major blow two plays before. He got up and he was running around staggering. Couldn't gain his balance. Couldn't run in a straight line. They've pulled him out of the game and he is now being examined by Danny Poole, the athletic trainer. Keep you updated on if he's got a head injury. That is a costly one as he has been the breakout star as the season has gone on. He scores a touchdown every 7.9 carries. Number one percentage in the nation. So they are without Etienne. Third and eight. Bryant complete Dion Kane gets free just when Bama was closing on both ends a 19 yard catch for another first down boy and credit Kelly Bryant for staying in there under duress he's got somebody bearing right down on him he delivers the football and the free safety Deontay Thompson making his first step went for the ball and missed and another first down conversion for Clemson as choice goes ahead for one yard and see the encouraging thing for the Tigers is they didn't have to abandon who they are offensively they've got some momentum now remember a year ago they were down 14 to nothing to Alabama and fought their way back and took a lead in the fourth quarter so no panic by Davo Sweeney with the Tigers right now as they enter Alabama territory for the first time Complete again to Kane. Well, Taco Bell has brought the best of the regular season to the college football playoff by creating the Live Moss student section. Hey, they're picking up the tap for 500 student tickets from each school right here at the All-State Sugar Bowl and the national championship game, giving the biggest games back to the biggest fans. How would you like to be one of those students? Grab yourself a ticket to this main event on New Year's Day. For the first time, Clemson finds themselves with a third down and short yardage here. A lot of options for their offense. Third and one. The cloud motions back. Bryant's going to keep, and Bryant spins for something extra. Inside the 30, move the chains again. When Deshaun Watson was playing quarterback, he would run, particularly in the big games. This is a quarterback run all the way. There's no read involved. He just turns into a running back. Look at him protect the football as he's spinning, and he easily converts the first down. Deshaun ran when they needed him to run. Kelly Bryant runs because that's a big part of their offensive package. It's by design, and he does it quite often. Pulls it here. Pressure off the edge. Gets away from Minka Fitzpatrick. But then tracked down by Rashawn Evans. Yeah, you don't normally see somebody get away from Minka Fitzpatrick. Edge rusher misses Kelly Bryant, but you see the speed of Rashawn Evans coming inside out and forcing Bryant out of bounds for a loss of yardage play anyway. There is the first team All-American, the 17th unanimous All-American under Coach Saban. 11th play of this drive. Low snap. Bryant is going to take it straight ahead. And will leave them with another third and long. Pretty good job by the Clemson offensive lineman that time staying on blocks. It wasn't a big game, but at least gives them a shot here at third down and nine. Really struggled with a downfield passing earlier this season. But the last three games, he's 64% on passes over 15 yards. A third down and nine. See if he goes downfield here. A gap pressure straight up the gut. Downfield he goes, looking for the freshman. Incomplete. T. Higgins was the intended target. Tony Brown had coverage. Well, because of the pressure by Deontay Thompson, who came on the safety blitz, Kelly Bryant wasn't able to step into this throw. It was a little bit underthrown, and that enabled Tony Brown a chance to make a play on the ball. If Kelly Bryant gets more on this football and Higgins can separate to the back of the end zone, it's probably a touchdown. So it'll be a long field goal attempt for Alex Spence, a 44-yard attempt. 
He just kicked a career-long 46-yarder in the ACC, ch ACC championship game. And he gets it. Alex Spence delivers. He has made seven of his last eight field goal attempts. Clemson's on the board. As a young boy, he dreamt of playing for the Tide like all boys growing up in Pelham, Alabama. But little Dabo actually did. So don't ask the man behind the big orange C how big of a deal your opponent with the slanted crimson A is. He knows just fine. He has a birth certificate, diploma, and championship ring to prove it. Dabo Sweeney from Pelham, Alabama to the college football playoff. And he got that championship ring 25 years ago today right here. He's got his team staying in the same hotel that he was staying in when he was with Bama. Rubs from the four-yard line. Met well at the 15. Holly, it's been a long path for Dabo. Well, that's right. That boy from Pelham, Alabama had a tough time growing up. At times, not a roof over his head. Had to stay with friends. When he moved to Alabama and got a dorm room, he actually had his mom come and live with him in the dorm for a while. He got into coaching. It didn't work out. He was selling commercial real estate. He went and visited Clemson and took a picture with Howard's Rock. Who knew that just a few years later he would actually be coaching there? It was hard, though. At the time, he told his young children, hey, should I get out of coaching and spend more time with the family? They said, no, Dad, do what you love because we love it, too. And now here he is trying to get to a second straight national championship. Back in New Orleans. This is Jacobs out of the backfield, met after just a yard. Yeah, I thought it was funny when we met with him the other day. He talked about, yeah, we, we, we're in the same hotel. We're practicing at Tulane the same way we did. He says, we're in the same hotel, but I can guarantee you I'm not in the same room as I was when I played. No, no. He's got a big boy room now. And he said, I'm staying at that same hotel that Gene Stallings put us, and we're going to practice at Tulane, the same practice field that we were on, hoping for a little bit of that magic from his past. Worst starting field position of the ball game for Alabama here. Going to swing it now to the other side. It's Najee Harris who's going to be a big star down the road. Getting some action here. True freshman from California. Holly? Dabo is certainly thinking back to that time at the Sugar Bowl 25 years ago. And he actually came out here onto the field with something in his hand. It was grass. And he walked the whole length of the field, dropping that grass as he went. He ended in the end zone. And I asked him, where is that grass from? What is special about it? And he said, that's something I'm going to keep private. I just call it my secret mojo. We'll see if it works tonight. And he's a very <laughs> spiritual guy and greatly appreciative of all the opportunities that have come his way. Dorian there is some of that grass that yeah, Dabo that. sprinkled here <laughs> on the field of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Dorian O'Daniel was helped off the field after that play, one of their real leaders on defense. He was hit hard on a crackback block by Jerry Judy, one of the freshman wide receivers that sprung that play for Alabama. And there's O'Daniel who leads the team in tackles. Flea flicker. Hurts winds it up, wants all of it. Ridley couldn't come down with it. It was underthrown, Joe. If he throws this thing deeper, Ridley scores. Because Ridley had to wait to catch the ball, Van Smith, the safety, was able to come and make a play. Now, Fleet Flickers take time, but if he loads it and throws right now, that's a touchdown easily. Because Ridley had to stop and come back for the football, the safety, Van Smith, was able to get his left hand in there and knock the ball away. Beautiful play in recovery by Van Smith. I love the play call. Just got to throw that thing out there sooner. Here's Damian Harris. Quick burst as he goes between blockers. Going to be just a yard short of that line. Yeah, see, this is to offset the quickness and the speed of that defensive front. They're getting the ball on the perimeter of this possession, throwing it quickly to their backs. We saw Najee Harris with a nice catch. We've seen Bo Scarborough catch it on the perimeter, and that time Damian Harris. And Alabama 
with another third down and short. They're three for five in the ball game on third down. Last year in this game against Clemson, they were two for 15. Third and one. Big Cleveland Farrell lines up looking to get a stop here. They meet Harris at first, and it'll depend on the spot. I think he no, did think get he forward it. to the 50-yard yeah. line to move the sticks. Both officials are marking him beyond the 50-yard line. Third down and one, boy, you just got a lot of options of what you want to do offensively. Alabama had an extra offensive lineman in again that play. They've gone to an unbalanced line a couple times in short yardage situations. Jacobs and Najee Harris back in as the two running backs. They have passed with his personnel. And he looks Jacobs way again. Well read. And Jacobs tries to break free, but he couldn't. Van Smith as well as Kendall yeah. Joseph in the mix. Well, they went to the well one too many times, trying to get the ball out quickly to a back on the perimeter. And because Jalen Hurts had to kind of double clutch that one, it enabled Clemson to really close on the play and stop it for no gain. Big Bo comes back in and running back. And he will get the carry on second down. With all that weight coming behind him, gets it to the 45. The third down was such a problem for Alabama last year. They ran the ball well for 221 yards, but two for 15. They couldn't stay on the field, and the net result of that two for 15, they only ran 66 plays in the game. Clemson, on the other hand, ran 99, and that wore down the Alabama defense late in the ball game. Third and six. Hurts with Farrell coming after him. And that'll be well short as he was just looking for an option and Scarborough was left as it. And Cleveland Farrell was left unblocked. He wanted to block the most dangerous and turn loose the outside. Unfortunately for Jalen Hurts, that was Cleveland Farrell who leads this Tiger defense in sacks and tackles for loss. And Jalen Hurts did whatever he could just to get rid of the football. A.K. Scott comes on the punt. Such a huge leg, but the last time he had a short punt opportunity, he didn't get the best kick off. Wants to try to pin Clemson inside the 10 if he can here. Renfro's got those heels at the 10. And that's where the fair catch comes in. Seven point margin for Bama right here in the All State Sugar Bowl. The All-State Sugar Bowl, brought to you by All-State, official protector of college football fans, AT&T. Taco Bell, where you can experience the power of the dollar. And the Capital One Venture Card, earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. Aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. When Mother Nature blitzes, you'll need the very best traction on and off the field. You'll need weather ready. Goodyear, more driven. Bama and Clemson had met up in Arizona, in Tampa, and now here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. Now we talk about field position in a game like this with two defenses like this. For Clemson, this is their fifth offensive possession, and four of them have started inside their own 20. Kelly Bryant. Complete downfield. As he's able to get it to Amari Rogers. They're very high on his future. Yeah, Amari Rogers and T. Higgins are both from the state of Tennessee. Amari Rogers is actually the son of T. Martin, national championship quarterback for the Volunteers, now the offensive coordinator of USC Trojans. And here's Feaster being ahead to the 30. Laura. Joe, Alabama was a little worried about Mac Wilson coming in and being responsible for so many calls after not having a lot of playing time this year. Jeremy Pruitt telling him he's got to be louder with those calls out there, trying to give the defense some clues of what they might be situationally in the huddle so they have a heads up. He came back from injury for the Auburn game, but hasn't been necessarily at 100% for practices and drills, but he is the communicator, as you mentioned, Laura. 
Second and six, looking for the screen here. Well read by the Bama defense as Feaster struggles. Well, the reason that's so important, as we see Minka Fitzpatrick, the leader of this defense, make a play, is this defense relies on communication. And Sean Dion Hamilton was that guy. Then when he got hurt, the freshman Dylan Moses, who took his place, assumed that role. And now they're down to their third signal caller in Mac Wilson. That's a lot of responsibility for any player. Third down and six. Bryant being chased and has to throw it away. Great spin move by Rashawn yeah. Evans to get after Kelly Bryant. He's an inside linebacker. He's rated very high by NFL scouts and a beautiful use of his quickness on the inside move. He beat Sean Pollard, the right tackle, and then Deron Payne was coming to the outside. He's going to go inside. Payne's going to go outside. So even though Kelly Bryant is able to elude Rashad Evans, Deron Payne has excellent leverage on the outside, and Kelly Bryant has to throw the football away. And now Kelly Bryant on third down is one for six throwing the football. Digs back to return the fourth punt of the game by Will Spires. Alabama was offside unless there was movement. It was fourth and six for what it's worth. Najee Harris Fire jumped. The snap. False start. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And they say that there was movement there. That was Isaiah Simmons on the outside of the punt protection. That's why Najee Harris took off early. Back Clemson up five more yards. And again, the field position. They started, Alabama started their last possession on their own 15. They moved it for a while, then they punted Clemson deep. And now they're going to get decent field position on the exchange here. Came after Spires again. And fielded by Diggs, takes a backward step, retreated, and then got back to the 40-yard line. Bama offense back up. Hurts is 9 12 and has the touchdown pass. What does he have to offer here? Well, Laura gave us the report about Jalen Hurts with his screensaver. Not happy with how he played last year in this ballgame. Off to an outstanding start, both running and throwing the football. Nice read there on the option. He's run it nine times for 27 yards or three times for 27 yards and then watch him elude the very fast Cleveland Farrell on the pass rush keep his eyes downfield find Calvin Ridley for the touchdown throwing the football nine of 12 for 78 yards an outstanding start in the first half for the sophomore Jalen Hurts as he gives way to Harris and one nice move to get the yardage there. Kendall Jobes with the tackle. You know, Jalen Hurts was not feeling well earlier this week. In fact, he missed two practices when they arrived here in New Orleans. So much was made about Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma right, out there right. in Pasadena. Nobody knew the about flu Jalen. Nobody knew that Jalen Hurts was actually <laughs> right. the guy missing a couple of practices. But that guy, Tua Tonga Vailoa, outstanding freshman from Hawaii, filled in. He was great in practice earlier this week. He is an excellent passer, but hey, Hurts looks mighty good right now laser focused right now Harris taken down and the flag is down on the far side there talked about first down efficiency how important that would be for Alabama as we await this penalty call Alabama's running the ball on Offside. first down very well defense number 45 five yard penalty second down there's Chris Register Brent Venables Outstanding defensive coordinator for the Tigers. You know, a couple mental mistakes by this Clemson defense. Giving Alabama the football on their side of the 50 now. This is the 20th play that Alabama has run in Clemson territory in the first half. Harris off right tackle as he was chopped down by Van Smith. And Smith had a key interception in that fourth quarter against Florida State. Game that people forget how close it was before Clemson pulled away. 
These two teams had two common opponents during the season. Florida State was one. Both teams were able to win the football game. Alabama beat him in week one, and they both played Auburn. Clemson beat Auburn early in Clemson. Alabama lost to the Tigers in the Iron Bowl. Second and eight, big hole up the middle. And another first down by way of Damian Harris, 11-yard run. Well, watch the right guard, Lester Cotton. Watch him block out. The tight end blocks in and a huge hole for Damian Harris. Time out. Lester Cotton with an outstanding block and a big hole for Damian Harris. 324-pounder who grew up right in Tuscaloosa. Local boy made good. I am just an icon living. living. There it is, the college football playoff national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. It is here in New Orleans. And Georgia knows that they're going to have a shot at it. Who will they get? Alabama or number one Clemson? Bama up a touchdown. 2.20 Two to go before the half and three timeouts remaining. Quick screen, Ridley, and a quick burst to the outside. Well, next Monday, it is the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. We'll be coming to you from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Georgia with a thriller today in double overtime over Oklahoma in what was yet another all-time classic in the Rose Bowl. Second and one, play caller's dream. And with it, take a shot. Denied that time by Trayvon Mullen, and a flag comes in. Well, there's as a Robert Foster was the intended target. There's a flag by the line of scrimmage as well. I think we might have offsetting penalties here. I think there was a lineman downfield. Jonah Williams, the left tackle, was downfield. I'm not sure if this was a run pass option, but Jonah Williams got himself beyond that mark down the field. So I think we're going to end up with offsetting penalties. by both teams, and they will offset. An eligible player downfield, offense number 73, pass interference, defense number one, offsetting fouls, second down. See, teams get away with this a lot when they run run pass options, but this one's obvious. He is going to get way down the field. An easy call to make. The line is blocking run. And the quarterback and receivers are adjusting the pass. There's the interference by Mullen. I think both were correct calls. And it's still second down and short. So we reset it. And this time, Bo Scarborough will try to pick it up. And he is denied by James Skalski fitting that up and filling that hole. Skalski's played a lot of football here down the stretch with the injury to Trey Lamar. We've talked about J.D. Davis. Skalski has been in there quite a bit as well. He actually started the ACC championship game. Fifth time, third down and two for Alabama. That's a linebacker look right there with the rip sock, and this is a big back with a whole lot of velocity. Scarborough will move the chains. Got a nice block by Calvin Ridley. Ridley is much smaller than the boundary corner, Trayvon Mullen, number one, but Ridley did his job and got Scarborough to the perimeter for the first down. And now Tempo right back to the line. And they're going to pound away on the inside, just a yard that time for Scarborough. Alabama with three timeouts. Looks like they might use one here as we near the one-minute mark. Alabama, the first of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. See what they get here before the half. Take a short break. Come right back. Well, hopefully you found out today that the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live or at home. Get access to the scores. You can download the ESPN app. Start streaming now. I mean, today was just awesome here in New Orleans around the hotel with what happened with UCF. And the LSU Notre Dame game, everybody had the app going, TVs in the restaurant going, and then that all time Rose Bowl to lead to this. Second and nine, minute and four seconds remaining before the half. Hertz has plenty of time, 
and now is finally taken down. I mean, he was looking over everything before Austin Bryan got to him. And that's the worst thing that you can do if you're Jalen Hurts because the clock keeps going, not just that you lose yardage. That's one you just got to throw away. If it's not there quickly, you have to throw it away. Avoid the loss and keep the clock from running down on you as well. Now they're down by 35 seconds. Ridley was the intended receiver, and he was well covered. Third and 14. Hurts, here he comes again, does Bryant. Hurts trying to get to the corner, and he will duck out with 22 seconds remaining, a gain of nine. A nice stop by the Clemson defense on that third down play. Back-to-back -back play, second and third down. I think this was a critical possession for them because Alabama has had the momentum the entire first half, and they're going to get the ball, the Crimson Tide, to start the third quarter. So I think it was very critical for Clemson to keep them out of the end zone and force this field goal try. Hurts shaving nine yards off the attempt of Papanastas, who made from 24 earlier. This a 33-yard attempt. They stopped it. They blew the whistle dead before the ball was kicked. That was all kinds of ugly as somebody got a hand up there. Prior to the snap, delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. You wonder who's more nervous right now, Nick Saban on the sideline after seeing that kick, or Papanostas after knowing what just came off his foot. Again, a critical opportunity for more points right before halftime for Alabama. Well, the man who talks to the PGA Tour is Justin Thomas on prepping the mental side will gladly take that mulligan. Now a 38-yarder. The upright says no, and Dabo says yes, and a head shaker for those in Houndstooth. Papanastas tried to center it, but was denied. And a knee is taken by Kelly Bryant. Clemson survived the first half. Completely agree. Remember, Bama is getting the ball in the second half. Alabama had three red zone possessions, one touchdown, one field goal, and one missed field goal. And a game that featured a field advantage for Alabama the whole first half is now done. AT&T field pass takes us down to Laura. All right, thanks, Joe. And, Coach, an opportunity for more points to end the half. How would you assess the way that your team ended this half? Well, I think we're controlling the, the ball, which is very good, but we got to finish drives in the red zone or put points on the board when we get an opportunity to. So, you know, it's disappointing, but we just got to keep playing. It's a 60 minute game. Thanks, Coach. Right, thank you. To Holly with Dabo. Well, Coach, we need starting field possession for Alabama. They have been at the midfield to start almost every one of their drives. How do you correct that? <laughs> well, we got to, first of all, do a better job on kickoff return. Really had a missed block, got pinned deep, and that cost us, put us in the hole a couple of possessions where they had the ball on about the 50. You know, really fortunate that it's 10-3 right now. Uh, very, very fortunate. Made Put a good, one good little drive together, but we're just not doing the little things good right now. I mean, we, we miss a call over here on a corner blitz. Would have had it dead to rights. I mean, just some stupid penalties. Lined up in the neutral zone twice. But hey, you know, we got to come. It's about as bad as we can play. It's a touchdown game, so we'll go in here and see if we can get corrected and come out here and play a little better second half. Always last half full. Thank you, Coach. Honest was Dabo Sweeney, wasn't it? The trilogy. They split the last two. Now seven points separates them. Quick break, and then halftime from here at the All State Sugar Bowl. It's Ali Frazier in the ring. Bird magic on the floor. It's Clemson Bama on the field. Raekwon Davis coming down on Kelly Bryant. Bryant is taken down. 
Hurts on, collected, looking things over. Farrell to the end zone. Touchdown! semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. And that Calvin Ridley touchdown is the difference on the scoreboard at the half here in New Orleans. Joe Tessitore and Todd Blackledge with you. What a day it has been. That all-time classic Rose Bowl. And now this, the other end of the spectrum where we got all defense here. Yeah. And take a look right here when you see the Clemson stats yeah. at the average field position start because that's critical when it comes to what we see here. Absolutely. With two defenses like this, field position is huge. The other big number in that first half third down you see Alabama has a better percentage on third down but it's it's all tied to staying on schedule right. and the yards needed in that first half Clemson's average yards needed on third down 8.2 Alabama 4.1 a lot easier to stay on schedule when you're coming up third down and short. That's yeah, just not how Clemson is built. And yeah. now they could be putting themselves in a position here where if they can't step up defensively on this first drive, do they get to that spot where they're asking too much of Kelly Bryant? Bama will receive the ball. A real challenge now for the Clemson defense. They dodged a bullet at the end of the first half with a missed field goal. Here's Ruggs on the return. And he is stacked up just beyond the 20. Let's go down to the field to Holly. Well, guys, two critical injuries in that first half for the Clemson Tigers. Their freshman running back, Travis Etienne, took a head injury. They've evaluated him. He sat out most of that second quarter as they evaluated him in the 10. I saw him just run out of onto the field with his helmet on, and he is likely to return to this game. But their other freshman superstar, T. Higgins, hurt his right leg going down for that touchdown catch that was just thrown a little bit short, and he has not returned to the game. I saw him being helped off at the half. And we'll get into this a little later, but that could be critical because part of the game plan they told us is to have 10 personnel out there and have the big-bodied wide receiver out in space. Those are both critical losses for the Clemson offense if they can't play. That was a missed exchange, and look at that. Just what Clemson needed to start this second half. Kendall Joseph fumble recovery. Yeah, put this on Jalen Hurts. Kendall Joseph alertly falls on it, but this is Jalen Hurts hanging onto the ball too long. The mess point is clean. Either give it or pull it. He hesitated, got caught in between, and the ball ended up on the turf. And Kendall Joseph, exactly what the Clemson Tigers needed right out of the locker room. Give your offense a short field. They worked against the long field the entire game. And Alabama, the team that led the nation in not turning it over, a critical mistake to start the third quarter. And now this thing is served up on a silver platter with field position. Everything we just talked about turns around in one play but you still got to get by that front wall with Anthony Jennings we've seen him do this in the first half he reads it he's locked in on the quarterback and he takes a direct line here he is his eyes are on Kelly Bryant the end is going to pop outside and his only responsibility is the quarterback and he drops him for a loss of yardage and here's that personnel grouping we were talking about as they shift now back out of it into the slant formation. Second and 12, Feaster. And he is Matt Minka Fitzpatrick coming up. Well, th this just shows you what kind of a player Minka Fitzpatrick is. First of all, he's lined up over Hunter Renfro. So he's responsible for Renfro, but as soon as he reads the play, he is in perfect position to tackle Feaster behind the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back -back negative yardage plays for the Alabama defense after the sudden change. Overcoming third down, such an issue tonight for Kelly Bryant. You see just one for six in third down passing. Again, it's the yards needed on third down. That's what's been the real problem for the Tigers. Third and 15 here. Bryant pressured again, ridden down again. Terrell Lewis, who's back to full strength. Both outside guys came inside on stunts. Rashawn Evans coming from one side and Terrell Lewis coming from the other side. It was only a four-man rush, but they collapsed the pocket perfectly on Kelly Bryant. And see how fired up Dabo Sweeney is as 
Dabo's son, Will, will be the holder here, the freshman for the attempt from Alex Spence, who hit from 44 earlier, this from 42. Snap was high, Sweeney got it down, and Spence puts it through. Good job by Dabo's son there on the hold, number 16. First son of a Clemson head coach to play for the Tigers since 1963. We're going to have to go up, get that thing down. And true and through was Spence. Now Dabo got the three, but he's still upset that they didn't have a better offensive possession. They got points, but Alabama has to feel really good about what they were able to accomplish defensively after the turnover. The first time Clemson had an edge in field position to start the second half, and they were only able to come away with three points. But it is a one possession game, and so everything Clemson wants to do offensively in the run and the throw game is still at their disposal. So two for two is Spence. It's a four-point game. Ruggs from the three. And he is popped, but kept his balance out to the 27. All State is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And today, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Little different than what we saw out in Pasadena earlier yeah. today, wasn't it? High scoring offensive affair out there. A couple defensive stops here and there that were critical, as well as a blocked field goal. But here, the defenses, particularly the defensive fronts, have controlled the action in a low scoring slugfest in the Sugar Bowl. Big Cleveland Farrell in that great defensive line. Facing off again, Hurts and Scarborough is the back now. He pulls it. And just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's check in with Laura Rutledge. Joe, it was a fiery halftime for Alabama. Nick Saban telling his players, people did not think you could win this game. Remember that. The players angry at how close the score was, wanting to come out here with fire. Obviously, one mistake from Jalen Hurts, but they were ready to go when they came out of the locker room. Not often that Nick has been able to play the underdog card. Yeah. Uh, he's had five weeks to prepare for this, the third part of what has been just such a great trilogy in recent years. Yeah, this is the fourth year in a row Alabama's been in the college football playoffs, but the only time that they weren't ranked number one or number two. Coming in ranked number four, Saban has used that to his advantage in this prep time. Receiver stack release to the top. On third and seven, fakes one way, tries to set up the screen the other, and that never had a chance. Clemson defense does their job. I don't think he could see Bo Scarborough. Bo got kind of hung up with the right guard, Lester Cotton, and it threw the timing. Watch Bo Scarborough try to slip out, but he's behind Cotton, and Jalen Hurts couldn't find him until late, and that disrupted the timing of the play. Nice stop by the Clemson defense. Now, J.K. Scott, who has the fewest punts returned of any punter in the country on to kick away to the dangerous Ray Ray McLeod. I want to avoid kicking the ball in the middle of the field against this guy. We saw him take one back 70 plus yards against North Carolina State. Turn that game around. It's a wobbly umbrella punt from J.K. And in the midst of traffic there, it bounces down to the 26. Well, Kelly Bryant's going to be back out there. Dabo was coaching him up with a little passion. Points right to him. Says, that's on you, young man. Time to step up for the junior quarterback. What a great night in New Orleans for the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. 
committed to honoring Glenn Moore, the athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Among those Glenn Moore, the athletes, is the group on the Alabama defense. What a difference this is compared to the first matchups we've seen between these two. 68 total yards tonight for the Clemson offense. Only three plays of 10 yards or more. Bryant to the outside, back shoulder complete to Deion Kane. You know, they could have called a penalty on Deion Kane at the end of that play. They didn't. This was a beautiful throw and a nice job by Kane. Just getting separation from Levi Wallace and a perfect throw. How about the hat camera there? Yeah. The guy working the chain game putting down the clip, giving us that spot right there on Deion Kane. Going to take a shot downfield, looking for him again. Kane goes up. Not able to secure the ball. Able to put it away through that process as Levi Wallace had coverage. Well, back-to-back -back plays. It was Kane on Wallace. Kane won the first play. The second one, Levi Wallace does a beautiful job of staying with it as the players were going to the ground and ripping it out. Travis Etienne left the game earlier back in with Kelly Bryant in the backfield on second down and 10. And as they pitch to the speedy Etienne, trying to get to the outside, and he does. It'll be a more manageable third down. Of course, when it comes to third downs, Renfro has often been the target for Clemson, but tonight has been a different story. You know what he's done in the other two yeah. games against Alabama to be the hero, especially last year's championship, but tonight shut out. But he might be a factor on this play. The reason he's not been a factor on third down tonight is because of the long yardage needed, but this kind of yardage is where he is at his best, using his quickness as a slot receiver. He's the number two receiver to the top. Bryant sprinting that way, has to extend the play, now going against the grain, and able to get the first down, 6'4", 220, and you can see how athletic he is. He was looking for Renfro. Renfro was covered like a blanket by Minka Fitzpatrick. And Kelly Bryant does what he can do. He turns nothing into something, and a conversion on third down, and a new set of downs for the Tigers. First down, ETN, quick burst up the middle, and it looks like Clemson is starting to find the rhythm a bit, Tom. That was the best running first down play that Clemson has had in the ball game. Went right at this Alabama defense, and ETN with a little bit of burst. And to your point, how critical it is for them to stay on schedule. They weren't able to do it in the first half. They're doing it right now. Second and two. Brian pressured, and it is a turnover. Big boy Deron Payne with the ball. How about it? And, and it was Anthony Jennings again. There is a flag down, but Anthony Jennings, who has tackled Kelly Bryant behind the line of scrimmage when he's run the football, this time gets there as the ball is coming out, and Deron Payne collects the interception. Deron Payne got Turn stymied. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, tumbling team, number 73, a 15 yard penalty. First down, Alabama. How quickly this has turned. Momentum with Clemson. Watch Anthony Jennings get to the quarterback. ETN is a freshman running back. He's late getting to the block. The ball is knocked up in the air, and Deron Payne is able to scoop it up. A freshman mistake on pass protection, and all this promise of a drive for Clemson goes the other way, and Alabama now back. Clemson territory. How many times do we hear coaches talk about the reason a guy isn't on the field as a youngster is because of the lack of pass protection. Costly there. Speedy, successful as Harris gets the call is ETN. He's been dynamic as a game breaker. But that time unable to handle Anthony Jennings and Payne got the interception. 
He just got caught up inside a couple too many steps, and he wasn't able to get back quick enough to pick up Jennings. He's trying to explain himself over there on the Clemson side of things. That is second and seven. Harris motions out. Clemson's defense has been able to bail them out most of the game. Can they do it another time here? Hurts. He is taken down by Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell is an outstanding defensive end. Only player in college football with two games this year with at least five tackles for loss. The thing that makes this defensive front so good is they are all four capable of wrecking your offense. So you can't afford to double any of them because all of them are capable of making a huge play. That time, it was Cleveland Farrell. They could use a huge play right now. Third and six, pressure caught right near the chains as it was Ridley, and we will see where they mark this forward progress as Ridley is trying to state his case. One of the things Brian Dable told us in our meeting with him yesterday is one of the things when they went back and self-scouted was that they missed some third down plays just coming up a little bit short. That time Ridley came back for the football, made the catch, but it's fourth and short, and Alabama is electing to go for it here. They're the best fourth down team in the country. They convert 81.3%. Fourth and one for Bama. Harrison Hurts talking it over. Here's your fourth down. Up and over Superman and move the chains, Damian Harris. Well, Damian Harris barely got back and got set. He was stepping up to get the signal. He gets set. The play starts off to the right, and with his vision, he sees a little crease to get over the top for the first down and the fourth down conversion for Alabama. Here's where I think you go back to Ridley. Here he is here. Maybe play action and try to get Ridley for a big play. Todd Blackledge, you know it. It's going to be first and goal tie. 13-yard catch by Ridley. You knock them on their heels a little bit with the fourth down conversion. Now you go to your best player, and now you go tempo. And this time, Harris couldn't go up and over. It'll be second and goal. Big pole often used in recent years in this spot. See, I don't think Bo is the answer here. Even though he's big and physical, he doesn't start quick. He has to build up some speed, and this Clemson defense is getting some penetration at the line of scrimmage. I think this is Damian Harris, or this is Jalen Hurts. And guess who has come into the game? The guy who just had the interception, 300-pound defensive tackle to Ron Payne. Yeah, this is their goal line set. They're going to throw oh, it to him. pass to him. Oh, my! Story booking for the big man! The dream of all big men. We saw him do it in practice. Would they call it in the game? Beautiful call and timing. He got a little pick play. They ran a pick play with two defensive linemen. Quinnen Williams, number 92, was the picker, and Duran Payne was the touchdown maker. Wow. Two defensive linemen who grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Just shocked the world in the Sugar Bowl. He, he gets the it. interception time. The guy who many around the program think as the best defensive lineman and undoubtedly most underrated in the country. An interception on one end, a touchdown reception on the other man. Big men everywhere rejoice. It is your moment.
The All-State Sugar Bowl, brought to you by the all-new Accord from Honda, Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel, and AT&T. College football playoff semifinal here at the All-State Sugar Bowl. And Clemson fans are feeling the pain. The Ron pain in interception, and then the touchdown reception. Started the drive and finished it in style. Caught that ball with his hands and tapped the toes inside the sidelines, too. That was pretty. But they got away with one, <laughs> which we'll show you in a minute. Another feaster and ETN. They could use a spark here. J.K. Scott kick away in the tie, have an 11 point lead. ETN. And take it out, and it'll be taken down. Coverage unit doing work. What is the answer for Kelly Bryant and the Clemson offense? Jalen Hurts to Deron Payne. Did you ever think we'd say that? Todd, take us through the Capital One pivotal performance. Well, you've got two Clemson defenders that are responsible for anything that comes out. But what you're going to see is Quinn and Williams is a defensive lineman. This is offensive pass interference. When you run a rub play, you want this guy to be subtle. This is not subtle. This is a block, <laughs> and he ends up blocking two guys, and his counterpart, Deron Payne, gets the headlines with the touchdown. But that is a play that gets called offensive pass interference a lot and that time it was obvious and didn't get called well we heard so much about that with the way the game ended last year when they met up oh and another one it's Mac Williams Williams pick six tied rolling Mac Wilson takes it home It was Levi Wallace working on Deion Kane. They've been going at each other a lot tonight. And Wallace is able to knock the ball up in the air to Mac Wilson. Last year, Alabama, they lived off of non-offensive touchdowns, 15 of them on their way to the playoffs last year. That was just the second non-offensive touchdown for the Crimson Tide this year. Things are unraveling for the guys in orange. Matt Wilson. Levi Wallace was a former walk-on. He got a scholarship last year. Here he is up here working on Deion Kane, and there is Matt Wilson. Wallace, man-to-man -man coverage, plays the slant, is going to knock the ball up in the air. Wilson comes down with it, and Alabama with their second defensive touchdown of the season. A lot of people think that Wilson could be the next great one for Bama. There's the AT&T pylon cam. He missed three weeks earlier in the season with a foot injury. He came back earlier than they expected. Was back for the Auburn game, but was not 100%. But he's 100% tonight. He's splashing right into that AT&T pylon cam. And this tied team with a second chance when they grab that four seed having that late season stumble in the rivalry game at Auburn and they have made the most of it they are healthier they were primed and they have shown it here in this second half let's go down to the field the Holly Rowe well, after that touchdown for Alabama, these wide receivers and offensive players for Clemson on the sideline are hanging their head. Bad body language, they're upset. But leave it to Christian Wilkins, the defensive leader of this team. He got in there, was slapping everybody on the butt, get it on their shoulder, pat, pat them on their helmet. We have plenty of time. Stop hanging your head. He doesn't like the body language either. He's trying to get this offense feeling that they can make a difference right now. Payne touchdown catch. Wilson pick six and Alabama. 
14 points in a span of 13 seconds. The problem for Clemson, though, is they are not built the way they were last year. This is not a team that is built to throw it 50 times, but now they're going to have to throw it more than they wanted to. Kelly Bryant, as he surges ahead, eight-yard run there. Championship game will be coming your way a week from tonight. Will Alabama hold on here and have Nick Saban facing his former defensive coordinator, Kirby Smart, with a thrilling win in double overtime in the Rose Bowl to lead Georgia to the college football playoff championship game. Ray Ray McLeod now on the pitch, and he was tackled by Deontay Thompson just short of that line to make. We've called his name a lot tonight. Deontay Thompson in for the injured Hootie Jones, making his first start. Plays with a lot of passion. He's got really good range. And we've seen him run sideline to sideline tonight making plays. That was a big one there on second down. He was one of the top safety recruits in the country just two years ago. And now he's showing it on the field. Third and one, Ryan. And they'll have the first down. The good thing for Clemson, and I really like this, Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott, the co-offensive coordinators, after your quarterback threw the pick six, after the momentum swinging to Alabama, instead of having him throw right away, you come out and give him a quarterback run on first down, and then they convert it with a couple other runs and a new set of downs. Now they might open it up and throw the football a little bit. That was the fourth time that Brian has rushed for a first down in a third down conversion situation. Deshaun Hand wrestling Bryant down to the ground. Well, this is not a good matchup for Clemson. They're trying to block a defensive end with a tight end. That's Mylon Richards, a tight end, blocking a much bigger man in Deshaun Hand. And Hand whips the block and then will not let go of the quarterback. You typically don't like your backs or tight ends having to pass protect one on one against defensive ends. Second and 23 after that. And into traffic, Mylon Richard, a nephew of the 1980 Heisman Trophy winner, Herschel Walker. Another third down and long. Clemson 5 of 11 on third down, the same as Alabama, but it just feels like Clemson has had so many more long yardage situations. There you see the average yards needed, almost eight yards every time they've lined up on third down. Now a third and 19. And once again, he sacked Isaiah Bugs and the rest of them. And once again, the freshman Running back Travis Etienne looked confused on what he's supposed to do in pass protection. I don't know if that was the only problem, but he didn't get much of a block helping on Isaiah Bugs and Alabama's defense with another huge sack. Fourth sack for Jeremy Pruitt's defense, the defensive coordinator who is leaving to become the head coach of the Tennessee Vols. Third Saturday in October will be weird next year for him. Sure will. <laughs> Maybe he brings a little something back to that great rivalry. And as Tiggs with a decent punt return. Bama's in control. Can they keep it that way? Stay with us to find out. We mentioned Alabama defensive coordinator Jeremy Pruitt leaving for Tennessee. Nothing new to deal with for Nick Saban. Now the fourth time that the master teacher has had four of his best students no longer riding that Saban school bus prior to a bowl. Worked out well two times. Then there was last year's Lane Kiffin experiment. Now that one didn't go quite as smoothly. But Lane was an outstanding football coach and did a great job with the Alabama offense during his tenure here. And and showed what a coach he is and what he's done in his new position as well. Go Scarborough, get a pass midfield. Of course, last year in the national championship game, he had that 
fracture of his right leg didn't require surgery and he was having such an outstanding postseason second and four out of the backfield off the hands you know that's far that, that's a hard catch and you say well he got two hands on it. he should have caught the ball Jalen Hurts throws this too hard Jalen Hurts has a hard time changing the speeds on his throw. That's one you just throw out there softer and allow a running back to catch it easily and turn up field. Right in front of the hat can on the chain game. There he is. Now he's <laughs> clipping that chain. We got cameras everywhere from the markers on the chain game to the hats. Third and four. Hurts so dangerous when he makes that decision and often easily moving the chains because of it. Another first down for the Part time. of what makes him so dangerous is he's so powerful. You know, it's well documented how strong he is in the weight room. A weightlifting champion in high school. But watch the power in his lower body. Just runs right through Ryan Carter, the cornerback. That's a 220-pound running back tucking the ball and running in the second level of your defense. You know a lot of quarterbacks that in high school threw the shot put? Here's one. And sliding for the ball was Robert Foster. Incomplete, they're saying. It hit the turf here in the Superdome. Yeah, and this is not a very good throw. You know, we, we've seen Jalen miss a couple throws. This is excellent protection on the play action. And the ball just kind of dives on him. And again, is it catchable? Yes. But if you hit him in stride as he's running that crossing route, he might turn that ball upfield and get to the end zone. Just a little bit off on the throw by Jalen Hurts on that one. You just get the feeling that Clemson has to get a stop here. I mean, they are hanging on for dear life at this point. And there's a nice play by the leader up front, Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell, much needed. Wilkins also in the mix there. Looks like Lester Cotton, the right guard, is down at the end of the play. Medical staff quickly out to tend to Lester Cotton as J.C. Hosnauer comes right out. He has filled in backup who has gotten steady playing time. Yeah. Here he is right here, the right guard. Usually in a play like this, something happens, he gets rolled up on. And there it is right there. You can see Cleveland Farrell at the end of the play. Into the leg of Lester Cotton. The left guard, Ross Piercebot Baker, missed a couple games with an injury. Hasnauer filled in for him. Now he's going to have to come in for Lester Cotton. Take a quick break. Uh, they help out Lester Cotton. That's nice to see Lester Cotton walking off the field on his own there. I know he's upset, wants to see this thing through to the end. He got rolled up on at the end of that play. It was Cleveland Farrell was getting after his quarterback, Jalen Hurts. You know, if you just happen to tune in here, you wonder how we got to this point. Alabama has been the better team, and they kind of have controlled the action, but the score was close. It was 10 to 6 a few moments ago. Clemson had the ball in Alabama territory. They were driving, they had momentum, and the big interception by Deron Payne. And all of a sudden, that happened, led to a touchdown, a pick six, and now Alabama in firm control of the football game. Third and 13. Skalski comes on the blitz. Bryant getting after Hurts as well. And Christian Wilkins trying to chase him down, but tiptoeing the sideline for a moment. It was the overly athletic Jalen Hurts. He did step out, but great balance as he went even for five yards. We credit this Clemson defense, too. I mean, even though they're down and their offense has not helped them much, they are still playing. They're still getting after Jalen Hurts. They've held Alabama to 225 yards of offense. The problem is their offense has only gotten 99 yards. That was the end of the third quarter. My house. Those 13 seconds that could define this All-State Sugar Bowl. 14 points by the time were scored in that quick span. 
24 to 6 as we head to the fourth quarter. Glad you're with us here, college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Pam up 24 to 6. He always looks the same, doesn't he? The demeanor of Jalen Hurts, who has led the way here. Of course, that salty, refreshed, healthier defense doesn't hurt either. J.K. Scott on to punt. Looking to pin Clemson here, reverse rotation, see if he can get it to die. And he does inside the five. Tony Brown on coverage to down that. Again, this game was 10 to 6. Clemson with momentum. The sack by Anthony Jennings forcing the bad throw. Deron Payne intercepts it. This would lead to a touchdown. And then the next possession on first down, Levi Wallace. Nice play on Deion Kane, knocks it up in the air. Mac Wilson takes it into the end zone, and all of a sudden, a 10-6 football game became a 24-6 ball game. And Clemson has been playing uphill, it feels like, this entire football game. Also feels quite different than last year when there was a 10-point double-digit differential to start the fourth quarter, doesn't it, Todd? Ryan? Gets it to the outside to Kane. Holly? You guys, for Clemson to get going, they're without one of their major wrinkles they were putting in for this game. Todd, you talked about it. The 10 personnel where they could put Hunter Renfro and Deion Kane side by side and get some of this pressure off them. But without T. Higgins that was going to be in there as the threat on the other side, he's on the sideline in crutches. They are now missing that wrinkle. Wish they had it. And they wanted no tight end and Higgins in there. Especially now when they want to throw the ball a lot. Bryant gets it to Hunter Renfro. Of course, had a game-winning touchdown with a second left last year. So with Higgins out, that means Travion Thompson, number one, who's coming out right now, will be playing a lot more here in the fourth quarter. Interesting that Renfro's first catch doesn't come until the fourth quarter here. Second and two. Pitch and bulldozing ahead that time was choice. Levi Wallace took it straight on. You know, Alabama has recruited a lot of five-star type talents in their defensive secondary. They put a lot of guys in the NFL. Levi Wallace was not one of those guys. He was a walk-on, got a scholarship last year, but has developed and blossomed in Nick Saban's program, and he has played a heck of a ball game tonight. And there's third and one as they motion back to a stack backfield. And met right at the line of scrimmage was choice. And it was Quinnen Williams and Rashawn Evans getting to him. We talked about this Alabama defensive front. They're different than the Clemson front. They try to control the line of scrimmage. It's more of a two-gap type philosophy. They're really good using their hands to control blockers. Rolling on the field as the runner made the line again. However, the play is under further review. And Clemson, which came into this game averaging 204 yards a game rushing, and that has been their identity this year, only 44 yards rushing tonight against the Crimson Tide. Let's take a look and see where Choice got to here. It looked like his helmet cross that line of course that yellow line is not definitive but whether the ball did or not that's the the question right now we'll clear it up when we come back to New Orleans Pac-12 crew here in New Orleans said it was indeed a first down Joe Tessator Todd Blackledge Holly Rowe and Laura Rutledge here for the All-State Sugar Bowl as Alabama's trying to hold on and get a date with the dogs for the title. Ray Ray McLeod now matched up on Levi Wallace. Ryan going to check down and into the ground. And the second and ten. Christian Miller was applying some pressure on Bryant. When Alabama's defense can get you into this kind of situation where they feel comfortable defending your run, 
with six defenders in the box area. That allows them to play with two deep safeties. And they overmatch you in their coverage. And that's where they're at right now. They feel very comfortable that they can defend the run and still have two safeties back in pass defense. Wow. Nearly picked off that time by Lewis as they tried to go with the tunnel screen and Lewis was sitting on it. Terrell Lewis, one of two linebackers that were injured in the Florida State game in week one that just now are back to full strength. And that time, Lewis almost came up with the third interception of the ball game for Alabama. Fifth consecutive time, Clemson third and 10 plus on third down. And coming straight up the middle on Bryant. And as we said, it's a much different feeling in this year's fourth quarter trying to dig out of the hole than last year's when Deshaun Watson was the trigger. Well, again, part of it is the number of plays, and everything builds up to that. Alabama's been better on first down. They've been better on second down. They've forced more third and longs. So Clemson has not been able to stay on the field the way they did with Deshaun Watson the last two years. Last year, Clemson ran 99 offensive plays. And they're at 49 right now with 13 minutes left in the game. It's those last nine or 10 plays with that tied defense getting worn down that really define things. Jalen Hurts trying to bring it in for a nice landing. The Allstate Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Taco Bell, official partner of the student section. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And IBM, you powered by data, knowledge, insight. That's you to the power of IBM. Big Al had a lot to be happy about in that third quarter. Our AT&T pylon cam offering up some of the looks of tonight's All-State Sugar Bowl. Ron Payne had the touchdown catch, and then Mac Wilson, the 18-yard interception return, and that has opened things up for Alabama. Let's go down to the field to Laura. Joe, Damian Harris is finally back in the game. We haven't seen him for quite some time. He's completely fine, but has spent a lot of time on the bike on the sideline trying to stay fresh. When you've got this many talented running backs like the Tide have, it's hard to keep that rotation fresh when they can't get game reps. And Todd, you would say it's a good problem to have, but it's also something they have to manage. Yeah, it is. And, and those guys have to manage it, not just the coaches. The players have to manage that you've got to stay fresh and ready when your number's called. Harris slipped that time. So it'll be a loss of five. I think all the backs that have been in the game have made productive plays. Bo Scarborough's made some nice plays for him. Najee Harris has been in for a few plays, and even Josh Jacobs. They've played four guys tonight, and they have all contributed in a positive way to the Alabama offense. Third down and long right now if you're Jalen Hurts. Your biggest concern, your number one priority is take care of the football. Don't do anything to put the ball in harm's way. Smith tried to keep his footing. Devontae Smith, good looking true freshman. Reminds you that wild card weekend begins Saturday at 420 Eastern. Going to have the AFC matchup, Titans and the Chiefs. That comes your way from Arrowhead on ESPN and ABC. Clemson could use a big time return from Ray Ray McLeod right here. Something to inject a little energy, maybe flip the field. For the Tiger offense. Did it against NC State in that showdown. Had a 77 yarder. This is just a skyrocket by J.K. Scott. Just under 11 minutes to play. 
Clemson desperate for a spark. This Alabama defense tonight has not looked anything like it looked down the stretch of the season. They have been fresh, rejuvenated, and they have controlled the line of scrimmage. Anthony Jennings has had a big ball game, but it again, that defensive front, controlling the line of scrimmage, not giving any room in the running game. They've held Clemson to 45 yards, rushing the football. They've sacked Kelly Bryant four times. And they have controlled the action up front. It has been the defensive front seven of Alabama that has controlled the football game tonight. Ryan quickly trying to get it to Greenlee incomplete. Clemson is averaging only 2.4 yards per play. And big Sean Pollard is still down at the end of that. Pollard, the sophomore, played a big role last year as a freshman in the title game against Bama. A great young man who serves his community, started a pediatric cancer foundation, had the young patients come to Clemson to shave his teammates' heads, see what happened to him here. It's kind of hard to tell. He was just going on a cut block. Played 95 snaps in the game a year ago. Shares time at right tackle with Tremaine Ankrum, who will now be in the game to replace him. There is Ankrum. C.J. Fuller in the backfield with Kelly Bryant. Fuller is a better pass protector of the young backs. And there is the fifth sack of the night for Bama. And it's Anthony Jennings again working on not a tight end. This is the best offensive lineman for Clemson, Mitch Hyatt. He's been starting since his freshman year. And Anthony Jennings plays with leverage and speed, throws off the block, and gets to the quarterback. We talked about the linebacker position. Anthony Jennings is one of those guys that missed a couple games with injury. They are healthier, they are fresher, and they have dominated the game tonight. Third and 17. And nearly Wilson with another one. He had the pick six earlier, and that time Mac Wilson couldn't haul it in. Heavy pressure on Kelly Bryant. He has to throw this one under duress. Isaiah Bugs right in the pocket, and he threw it right to Wilson. And Mac Wilson just not able to catch that one. Now the defense did her damage. Yet another sack. Five sacks allowed is a season high for that Clemson offensive line. I'm sure right now for Kelly Bryant, it must look like there's about 14 Alabama defenders on every play. Seventh punt for Spires tonight. Fair catch at the 41. Closing in on an all-SEC national championship game. Bam up 18 here at the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Where aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Committed to honoring Blinkworthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Clemson's offense has only totaled 113 yards against Bama's defense. Been a tough night for Kelly Bryant. Tebow and Watson will gone. Sean at this point in the fourth quarter last year against Bama was starting to put on that incredible show. I have a feeling this might be the last possession we see for Jalen Hurts as well. Laura, what can you tell us about Lester Cotton? Well, yeah, Joe, he left with a right knee injury, was taken directly into the locker room where he did walk on his own power. Of course, we saw him walk off the field that way as well, but will not return to this game. Of course, the quick turn 
to playing next Monday if they hold on here for the college football playoff national championship game. Scarborough again is on second and seven. NBA Wednesday doubleheader is going to tip at 8 Eastern as the Cavs go up against the Celtics. Then at 10.30 Eastern, Russ Carmelo, Paul George, the Thunder against Alonzo and the Lakers. And coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN. You know, Joe, in a lot of our lead up to this game, we've talked about what were going to be the keys. Two great defenses. We talked about field position and staying on schedule. And, and Alabama has clearly been the better team when it comes to both of those things tonight. Third and three. Hurts throws a dart downfield. And Henry Ruggs, freshman target, pulls it in for 15 yards. That's nice job by Jalen Hurts getting outside the pocket, changing the launch point, rolling to his left, getting his shoulders turned. I'm going to take a look at this to make sure it was a clean catch. Rolling on the previous play, a completed pass is under further review. Now Ruggs makes the most of things. He's been targeted two times today. He's got two catches. Seven catches on the year. Five he came in tonight being touchdowns. Got those hands yeah, underneath and like between the ball catch. and the turf. Talk about being efficient came in with seven catches on the year and five were <laughs> yeah. touchdowns and long ones. I mean uh, big plays for touchdowns. You know, he's a team in yards per catch at 25 yards a reception. They have three freshman receivers that they are really high on and they've you know they've not really been able to have a guy to balance out Calvin Ridley this year Ridley coming into the game with 55 catches the second leading receiver was Bo Scarborough with 14 coming into tonight but they have these young receivers and Devonte Smith Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs that they just think are going to be outstanding players they've had extra reps here in the bowl prep and uh, the future's bright at that position for Alabama no question after review the running on the field is confirmed completed pass first down so Ruggs reception stands and we have under eight and a half to play and a first down for the tie. Alabama going to use as much clock as they can at this point in the ball game and still maintain their aggressiveness on offense. Stacked up that time with Scarborough. Christian Wilkins on the tackle. We have not called his name enough. Nick Saban holds on here. He could be chasing history again. Bear claimed six national championships. Saban with five. Of course, Ford, Alabama. One at LSU. It was just a second away last January from tying the Bear. The amazing thing, as great as his numbers have been and his success unprecedented at Alabama, he has not fared very well in Sugar Bowl games as the Alabama head coach. This would be his first win in four tries. Bryant chasing Hurts. Somebody on the Alabama side. I don't know if that was Coach Saban or not, but somebody got wiped out. I think it was Nick on that rollout. I think that was I think that was Coach Saban who got run over on the Alabama sideline. Something won't be top. Jalen Hurts, Nick Saban, a former defensive back at Kent State, just kind of shakes that one off. The kids nowadays would brush that off, you know. He, he probably was doing that in his own way. Third and ten. As Hurts will throw it away again. Credit this Clemson defense for not giving up. Nick Saban doesn't like the way they're finishing these drives. They've got the field position. 
and they just have not been able to put the thing away. And you see him getting into Brian Dable a little bit right now. He wanted another touchdown to kind of ice this thing and take some of his guys out of the game. And I don't think he feels comfortable doing that, finishing the way they are right now. Listen, Dable is well conditioned to dealing with this kind of head coach all the years with Belichick and even the foundation of his career prior experience with Saban was with him a couple of years back in the late 90s. Just over seven minutes to go here in New Orleans. First down run by Kelly Bryant. So he goes ahead for four. Now the tough task of replacing Deshaun Watson, and yet came in today having set the Clemson record for most wins as a first year starting quarterback, was the MVP of the ACC championship game. But facing his toughest challenge tonight, this refreshed Bama defense. As Hunter Renfro will have it for what should be a first down. Only his second reception of the ball game. Again, the last two years, he has really been a thorn in the side of Alabama. 17 catches, 180 yards, and four touchdowns. They have held him completely in check tonight. Adam Choice with a decent run for the Tigers. Clemson just has not been able to manufacture any real big plays. Very few plays beyond 10 yards for this offense tonight. RPO works well that time to Deion Kane, who shakes loose and then makes one extra cut to get a few more yards. There's one of those plays right there. Make a guy miss, break one tackle, and turn it into a bigger game than it was when you caught the football. Jennings was getting after Kelly Bryant that time. There's no intention of grounding. The quarterback is outside the pocket, and the pass crossed the line of scrimmage, second down. Anthony Jennings has the, the kind of physique and build that reminds some people of Courtney Upshaw, 6'3", 262-pound, red shirt sophomore. And he has had a heck of a football game tonight. Big, fast, strong, and disruptive. Having to go up for it was Kane, and then was cut down that time by Averett. the numbers on Bryant. This is another thing that Clemson wanted to do tonight is put Hunter Renfro and Deion Kane on the same side of the field into the boundary. That's where they are. That was a big part of what they wanted to do tonight, but it just, they haven't had many opportunities to take advantage of it in the ball game tonight. Third and three. And Renfro, as they are wont to do, was the target on third down. See, when it's third and three to five, he becomes a really valuable receiver because he's quick, he knows how to work in space, and he has great hands. When you get third down and 10 or more, he becomes less of a factor in your third down pass offense. 31 career catches now for first downs, converting third downs. There is Anthony Jennings. Is they're looking at that left arm. That was already taped up prior. He had that big quarterback pressure that caused the turnover in the third quarter that really created the defining moments of this game. Ron Payne with the interception turned into Deron Payne, the 300 pounder with the touchdown catch, and then the Mac Wilson pick right. six. Trick play, Feaster downfield, and incomplete looking for Kane. Levi Wallace again, not fooled. 
He has been matched up on Deion Kane quite a bit tonight and has more than held his own. So down marker with the camera on it. Station right in the midst of the defensive substitution. Tenth play of this Clemson drive. Third and seven. Pressure coming from Tony Brown. Bryant gets rid of it, and somehow Renfro was able to haul that in while keeping his position on the sideline. Now, beautiful catch. Working on Minka Fitzpatrick. Excellent matchup. Can't cover it any better, but that's a beautiful throw by Kelly Bryant to the outside shoulder. Well, he gets in and out of it quickly, doesn't he? He yeah, sure does. Feaster now. And down the line is Matt Wilson. And look at this effort moments ago by Renfro. I mean, this ball has to be thrown perfectly. He's under duress. He's fighting off Fitzpatrick and still has the presence to not only catch the football, but get that one foot inbound as well. I'll tell you, my man on the hat cam has been the production <laughs> MVP tonight, hasn't he? That was a great look. An excellent catch. Straight up and spinning ahead towards the 11 that time was Feaster. And coming up on four minutes coming off the clock on this drive. And there's Anthony Jennings is down again at the end of this play. We've already seen Lester Cotton, a starting offensive lineman, come back out in street clothes and a brace on his leg. It's the last thing that Alabama wants is to get thinner yeah. at linebacker. Of course, Sean Dion Hamilton is out for the season injured Dylan Moses injured his foot in practice in mid December Keith Holcomb has been working his way back from pulled hamstring and now Anthony Jennings who has played so well tonight is down here in the final three minutes of this all state sugar bowl. This position has just been such a, a hard hit area all season and the linebackers are used in so many ways. They're so versatile in this defense. Anthony Jennings has had a heck of a ball game tonight and you just hope that he's going to be OK and be able to continue to to play on if Alabama advances to the championship game next week. Todd I get the sense this didn't surprise you tonight. It didn't because I just knew that Alabama was still one of the four best teams in college football. There was so much talk at the end of the year and, and when the committee was making their decision that, that maybe they didn't deserve it. Yes, they limped down the stretch, but it was because of injuries more than anything. And they didn't play well against Auburn, and they're the first to admit that. But they're fresh tonight, they're rested, they're healthy, and they've proven that they're one of the four best teams in college football and have made a dominant statement tonight against the number one team in the country. We'll try to get you an update on Jennings. Whether it's here in the game broadcast or coming up later with SVP on Sports Center. Third and four. That was low and bounced. incomplete. Yeah, I think it bounced off the turf. I would say the only thing that would be really concerning for Alabama right now is you take a look at this replay. The hands tried to get under, but it bounced up to Hunter Renfro. Is that last injury to Anthony Jennings? The linebacker position has already taken a real toll Third with of injuries. Play of incomplete pass is under review. He could it just looked like this ball bounced up off the ground to Hunter Renfro. He did get his hands down, but watch the ball. I don't know. That's pretty good. Maybe it was off his hands. Maybe he did. He has the best hands on the team. There's no question. Did he get his hands all the way under the ball? Let's bring in our rules expert, Bill Lamagne. Billy, what do you see? Uh, you know, the first reaction was that had a bounce up off yeah, the it ground. Yeah, looked like it. But on that views we've had here, 
That bounced up off his hands. Yeah. I expect replay to reverse this to a catch. Now, the thing that'll happen with that when they give it the catch is they're going to start the game clock yeah. again. Two and a half minutes to play here. Yes. The guy is such a good football player. He really so much is. fun to watch. As a younger brother that is a a tight end, a freshman tight end on the team. And he was a scrappy 150 pound walk on receiver. He went on to earn a scholarship and went on to become a championship game winning hero for the Clemson Tigers, Hunter Renfro. After review, the ruling is the receiver did maintain control of the ball. It's a completed pass. Fourth down to nine yard line. Well, good reversal. Good job by the replay officials. And the third, third down reception on this drive for Renfro. That is his specialty. A catch on third down, but not enough for the first down. Fourth and very short now for Clemson. There is Jennings. Can be critical to get an update on his availability. Assuming they hold on here. The next week in the championship game against Georgia. Timeout. Clemson, the first of the half. Be 30 seconds in length. College football playoff national championship weekend in Atlanta going to be the place to be whether your favorite team is playing or not and you can learn about all the events and festivities planned for championship campus at collegefootballplayoff.com won't want to miss out on the biggest weekend in college football thrilling outcome with Georgia in the Rose Bowl as they will put in mean, the home crowd's going to be going nuts. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Georgia, they played in this game on January 1st, 1983, and a happy oh. anniversary oh, for the most you. outstanding player, your national championship right yeah. here, 35 years yeah. ago today, a long time partner. Ago. Yeah, a lot of good memories in this building. It was, a, it was a fun game, and, you know, it's funny because every time I see Hunter Renfro, it reminds me of one of our receivers, Greg Garrity, who made the game-winning catch in that ball game. Very similar kind of player. Well, here's fourth and one now. Bryant, can he get there? Yes. So it'll be first and goal for Clemson. Georgia looking to end a 36-year national title drought. Of course, won the title in 1980. Laura. Joe, Anthony Jennings officially out, according to Alabama Athletic Trainers. It's a left knee injury, and they're going to reevaluate more as soon as this game is over. But he could barely get himself even to the bench after coming out of the medical tent. Yeah, that, that would be a concerning injury because he has been a huge factor for the defense tonight. Looking for the fade here. As Kane was trying to get free, Ronnie Harrison is still discussing it with him. You know, one of the reasons they were able to get some of these linebackers back is because they had so much time off after the Iron Bowl. They weren't in the SEC championship game, and it was a month before they played here. Not so heading to the championship game. You're looking at a very quick turnaround, a normal game week turnaround. And whether or not that's enough time to get Anthony Jennings back or not, that'll be a big question. Second and goal now, two minutes to play. This is the 16th play of this time-consuming drive as Bryant was decked at the line of scrimmage. I want to remind you that the Ford Escape postgame is coming up after this. Time out. And we'll hear Clemson, the second and a half. From the coaches, we'll have the presentation of the All-State Sugar Bowl trophy, and we will start talking about what will happen a week from tonight. Georgia Alabama will mean Nick Saban against Kirby Smart, his longtime defensive coordinator. And we know every time a former Saban assistant faces off, you hear the stat. And now it's up to 11 and 0 is Nick Saban all time against his former assistants. And by the way, all 11 of those wins come by at least 14 points. Well, Kirby was with him a long time. 
has modeled what he's doing at Georgia in his first two years. A lot based on that process, that model that he learned from Nick Saban. And he is building something there that's not going to go in the way anytime soon either, the way they're recruiting right now. Third and goal. Bryant to the end zone. Incomplete. Alabama's defense very much wants to keep Clemson out of the end zone. Dabo wants a touchdown to build with his team as much as anything. That's why he called timeout. And it's coming down to this play on fourth and goal. You got to think Renfro right here in the slot. Some kind of a rub play with two receivers coming to the inside and Renfro breaking out. Fourth and goal. Too high for Thompson. Turnover on downs. And the tide is going to be headed to play for it all. That big block C on the hat of Dabo Sweeney. He says he's going to change hats. A little superstition. It was 25 years ago that Dabo was on this field with the script A. And he swiped the game ball, the Sugar Bowl, from a Bama manager to celebrate. Won a national title as a player. And then a year ago, won a national title as a coach. But now it's the coach on the other side who will be playing for history. Chasing Bear Bryant. Saban's got five. The Bear with six national titles. He's going for five and nine seasons, right? He is. That's pretty amazing. In today's world of college football, that kind of run. Todd, that would be the shortest span needed to win five titles in the poll era. 16 seasons by Alabama from 64 to 79 under Bear Bryant. But if Alabama does it, their fifth national title in the last nine seasons. Well, the one thing you know that Nick Saban and his staff and his support staff knows about since they've been in the playoffs every year is getting a head start on both teams that were playing in that Rose Bowl game earlier today. And Kirby Smart, even though he's not been in this position as a head coach, was there as an assistant. I'm sure they did the same thing. And they have studied up extremely well on both Clemson and Alabama. Two teams will be very well prepared next Monday. Harris looking to close this thing out in style here. As this will be the second national championship game to feature two teams from the same conference since a title game was introduced in 98. Of course, Bama topped LSU in that rematch game in 2011. And now it'll be Kirby and Nick, former defensive coordinator, against the big boss stylistically you know what you're gonna get that georgia run game that bama run game the great backers and a whole lot of sec ball coming right in atlanta we talked about both defenses being great in this ball game Clemson held Alabama to 258 yards, but Alabama was even better. 188 yards of total offense for the Clemson Tigers, and Alabama gets the win. 24 to 6. Clemson held to 188 total yards by that refreshed Bama defense. Kelly Bryant just 124 yards passing through two interceptions. Time for some uh, fried chicken and some pig feet. That's what he says his favorites are. Time now for our AT&T field pass. Here's Laura. Thank you, Joe. Coach, this team put their destiny in others' hands at the end of the regular season, but we're given another chance. How did they take advantage of that opportunity tonight? Well, I think what we wanted to do is reestablish our identity. I thought we lost it in the last game of the season, and, you know, the guys overcame hard. They played hard in the game, and we were physical. So I'm really proud of our team in terms of what they were able to do here today. So, you know, we got a lot of things.
things that we can get better at, but just a great team win for us. Deron Payne with an interception and then a touchdown reception on the other end. What can you say about his performance? Well, he played he's played well for us all year long, and you know he's a great athlete for a big guy, so uh, he got a chance to make some plays today. Now an all SEC national championship, and you'll face off against your former assistant, Kirby Smart. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm proud of the job that Kirby's done there, and they got a great football team, so you know, it'll be a challenging game for us, and, uh, you know, we'll enjoy this for a little bit, but then we got to get ready for that one pretty quick. Coach, I got to ask if you're okay, because we did see Jalen Hurts run into you and knock you down on the sideline. Everything good? I'm good. I'm really good. All right, thank you. Okay. That'll make them like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Says Nick Saban. The 66 year old coaching legend who had his starting quarterback run into him. But you know what? It's all smiles after a win. Holly. Well, coach is walking through right here, but it is a four point game. Clemson has the momentum, and you get that pick. Yes, ma'am. What did you see on that play that allowed you to get that? Um, I was just, just reading my keys, and I seen uh, Anthony Jennings rushing that edge real good. And I seen the ball come out, and I just get caught it and tried to uh, go as far as I can. So then they call your number on offense at the yeah. goal line and you've had that package in before but at what point did you know they were going to actually throw it to you. Uh, we've been running it for a minute now but I didn't think they were going to do it this early but uh, I, I'm so happy they did and I'm, uh, I'm blessed and uh, just thankful for the opportunity. How many touchdown passes do you have in your career that you've caught. Uh, I caught one in high school and uh, then this one so that'll be my second one. How good are those hands. Uh, yeah they excellent. They, need, they should put me a wide receiver. <laughs> OK I think we'll see more of it. <laughs> Winning this game you already have the paper in your hand that says sweet revenge. What was this like to put all those questions to rest about were you good enough still. Uh, me and my teammates we did a lot of hard work coming up here and um, we just wanted to prove all the, uh, the doubters and the naysayers that, uh, that we are a really dominant team and we haven't lost anything. Georgia, Alabama, what does that sound like for a national championship? Oh, that sounds good. Two ACC teams going at it, and I'm uh, ready to get after it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Joe? Deron Payne says, hey, Coach William Smith back at Shades Valley High School once let me catch and score a touchdown, and then Saban did it tonight, and that was the moment that sparked things. He had the interception, he had the touchdown, and now we have this. Georgia and Alabama for the college football playoff national championship. More to come from the All-State Sugar Bowl. The 2018 Ford Escape Post Game is brought to you by Ford. Going further so you can. Ford Escape Post Game Show here as Alabama beats Clemson in the All-State Sugar Bowl 24-6. Joe Tessitore and Todd Blackledge with you. Now that you've seen it play out yeah. Todd was this version of Clemson really equipped offensively to handle that version of a fresh and healthy Alabama defense. No I don't think they were you know and, and you can say well Kelly Bryant wasn't ready for that kind of a game but but that's not how their team was built their team was built this year. They said look we've got four returning offensive linemen we've got some good backs our quarterbacks are really good runner we're going to run the football last year. Early in the game against Alabama, they decided we can't run. Yeah. We're going to just let Deshaun Watson throw us back into the game. He threw it 56 times. They thought they could run the ball this year against Alabama with more success. And when that got taken away, they were not ready or able to throw themselves back into the football game. Alabama's defense proved that they are one of the best, if not the best defense in college football again yeah. tonight. Even with the great Deshaun Watson yeah. last year, it came down to yeah. a miracle at the end with a second to go. Much more to come here in the Ford Escape post game when we come back to the Big Easy and the All-State Sugar Bowl. Stay with us, folks. The 2018 Ford Escape post game is brought to you by Ford. Going further so you can. Bama is celebrating sweet sugar here in New Orleans. Ford Escape post game show continues on, and we go to Kevin Agandi for the trophy presentation. Joe, thank you very much. Want to say Happy New Year, and what a way to start 2018, Alabama. Congratulations to the Tide and their fan base on this big win in the semifinals. We also would like to recognize Allstate for their support of football to present the Allstate Sugar Bowl trophy to the winning coach Nick Saban, Tom Wilson, 
chairman and CEO of the Allstate Corporation. Tom? Well, congratulations. On behalf of the Allstate Sugar Bowl and College Football Playoff, congratulations to both teams for outstanding seasons which show us why we love college football. But tonight, Coach Saban, you and the Alabama team showed us why, on behalf of the college semi-playoff, you deserve this trophy. You earned it yard by yard, inch by inch. What a great game. Congratulations. Coach Saban, first off, congratulations. You mentioned the waste of failing. To look at what did your team show you tonight? Well, these guys played with a relentless competitive attitude. I mean, they were warriors out there on this field. This was a tough game. Clemson has a good team, and I can't be prouder of a bunch of guys for the way they competed in the game for 60 minutes, and um, they just did a fantastic job, each and every one of them. I know you made this a business trip, but when you came up stage, you were smiling. The hat was on backwards. What does this win mean to you? Well, it means everything to me, to the players. These guys have worked hard for a long time to get back in this position because of what happened to us last year when we got here. So uh, now we got to focus on trying to finish. And finishing will be in Atlanta, where the season started. We heard the chance, SEC, SEC. You get the chance to face your former assistant. And when you look on the other side, and Georgia, and Kirby, what will, you be, uh, what will be your first thoughts? Well, I'm proud of the job that he's done. He's done a fantastic job there this year, and you know their team has done a fabulous job to get in the position that they're in, so um, I'm sure it'll be a great, great football game. Did you know Duran had hands? That's right. Do you see it in practice? We wouldn't have thrown it to him if he didn't. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so much. And now presenting our most outstanding players, all Sugar Bowl President Stanley Kahn and Chairman Kerry Wicker. The most outstanding offensive player of the game is quarterback Jay Hurts. Jalen, much was made about the screensaver that lost to Clemson a year ago and the screensaver of them celebrating. Are you ready to change that screensaver? I think I can change it now. <laughs> what does this mean to you, winning here, winning on this stage, and beating Clemson for the chance to play for the national championship? It's, it's not about me. It's about, it's about these guys we go, we go to work with every day. Um, I give all the credit to them. They, they do a great job, and they do a great job playing team football, playing Alabama football. What do you think of Deron's hands? Calvin might want to watch out. <laughs> Did you hear that, Calvin Ridley? You better watch out. Jalen, thank you so much. And the most outstanding defensive player of the game, it's Deron Bay. Duran, congratulations. In a five-minute span, as a defensive lineman, you made an interception and caught a touchdown. Have you ever dreamt of that scenario? Oh, yeah, I dreamed about it last night, and it all came true, so I'm uh, just blessed and thankful for the opportunity. Did reality match that dream last night? I didn't think I was going to be that tired, but <laughs> it, it was worth it. Hey, much was made about Clemson's defense coming into this game. Were you guys aware of that? Did the defense talk about that coming into this contest? No, we just tried to uh, create our own identity and go out there and work hard every day at practice and just buy into Coach Saban's program and uh, just execute the game plan. When do you start thinking about Georgia? Soon we get back home. So you're going to celebrate tonight? Yeah, for a little second. When you caught that touchdown pass, I hear that's the second one in your career. What was the first time you caught a touchdown pass? Uh, my senior year of high school, they had me a tight end, and I caught one. Were you nervous when you knew you were going to get the ball? No, nah, I got gold hands, so uh, I thought I'd go kick. 
Show America those gold hands. Show them. Next up, Atlanta and the chance to face Georgia on Monday night on ESPN, the national championship. Guys, thank you very much. Congratulations, Alabama. Joe. And Coach said, sort of lost our identity at one point towards the end of the season. Well, consider the identity reestablished, Coach Saban. Confetti in their hair as they celebrate in New Orleans. Alabama wins the All-State Sugar Bowl. Greg Sankey's dream. The commission is going to have two SEC teams playing for it all. Deron Payne, the star, the interception and the touchdown catch. He says it was his dream last night. I didn't think I'd be that tired, but it was worth it, said the big guy. Was it ever? What a night for the 300-pounder from Birmingham. Bama takes care of business against Clemson. Next Monday, it's the College Football Playoff National Championship presented by AT&T. It'll be Georgia and Alabama at 8 o'clock right here on ESPN. What a day it was in the sport. From the thrilling Rose Bowl to Bama getting back to being the mighty tie. Time now to send it to Scott Van Pelt on SportsCenter. So long from New Orleans.